everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Maligator Mom. I wanna wish you guys a very Merry Christmas, and I also wanna help you out with your Christmas list for the dog lover in your life. All of the products that you see right here are all made in the USA, and they also all universally accept the code Maligator Mom, which makes it very easy for you to remember when you're checking out. So number one is MunsterMilling.com. Now this is the food that I feed my personal dogs. This is an all stages food, which means that even Crisis as a puppy has been on this food since she was eight weeks old. This is a holistic, fully customizable dog food. I highly recommend it. Number two is going to be robertcabral.com. A subscription to his website would make a fantastic gift. I'm someone who consumes a lot of online dog training content and his is truly second to none. Make sure you check it out. Another question I get asked all the time is what kennels do I use? For my personal dogs, it's a no brainer. This is gonna be a gunner kennel. All of my dogs have gunner kennels. I purchased these gunners because not only are they made here in the USA, in fact, right here in Nashville where I live, but they are also the first kennel to ever receive a five-star crash test rating. And last but not least are the collars that my personal dogs wear. These are available from Tactipup.com. They are fully customizable with their name. You can get a handle on them and they have all metal hardware buckle systems with the Cobra buckle made right here in the USA. Definitely check these out. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Maligator Mom, and today I am here with my daughter, Maligator Daughter. This is Eve, and she is my youngest. She is nine years old, and we are going to sit down today. We thought it would be fun to have a little girl time. So um, we, we do love our dogs, and we do love to get outside and that kind of thing, but we're also you know, we're girly girls. We like to dress it up once in a while. We love to play with makeup and clothes and that kind of thing as well. We also have a feminine side. I think oftentimes that gets a little forgotten or brushed aside when you tell someone that you have a hobby of working dogs. Um, so, you know, it's, it's my belief that you can be both. You can be whatever you want to be. So today, this one is kind of for the girls. Um, however, or, or guys, it depends on what you're into. If you like makeup, more power to you. Um, so anyway, this would also be a great video for, um, you know, if you're looking for like some tips for what to pick up your wives, cause like I know all the best products and I'm going to link all of them down below. And I'm sure that there is some really nice stuff here that your wives or partners would probably love to have. So, um, if you're interested in that, then stay tuned. But otherwise we're just going to get into doing some makeup together and then we're just going to talk dogs. It's going to be makeup and Malinois. So... <clears throat> You're going to drink during the intro? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we're going to do makeup and Malinois and my daughter here, I'm going to ask her some questions because I think it's kind of interesting to get a child's perspective. You know, she was, uh, what were you, five, I think, when the first Malinois came home. And so, um, you know, let's kind of ask her what that was all about, what she thinks about the dogs. Because I think that getting her perspective as a nine-year-old being raised with Malinois would be kind of interesting, especially if you are yourself a mother or father who has children entertaining the idea of bringing a Malinois home, or maybe you already have one and you're not sure how they should be interacting. This might be a good video. So, um, so yeah, stay tuned. Making our Christmas memories. Okay. So let's get into it. So the very first thing that we're gonna do, the very first thing that I do is my eyebrows. And so I prep my eyebrows with a little bit of gel. Are you gonna do eyebrows today? Uh, I think so. Okay. So what do we use for brows? We use the very best thing on the market. We use Anastasia. If you don't know what Anastasia is, I will link it down below. We use Anastasia wax and Anastasia dip uh, pomade or dip whatever. Yeah, pomade, look at that, I know my stuff. And we are going to work some wax into our eyebrows. That's why, here, I got you a little, here, I got you this in here, so you're gonna have your glasses. So, um, who, who would you say is your favorite, favorite Malinois out of all the Malinois? Which one is your favorite? My favorite is, um, because every time I pet her, sometimes she bites me, sometimes by accident. She bites me by accident? Yeah, 
yeah, sometimes, but it doesn't hurt. It's because she keeps, like, trying to, like, she's, yeah, she's just a little mouthy. Yeah. Right, but she's not actually biting you, right? Yeah, it, she, she's just too excited, and then just sometimes get um, a lot of energy mm -hmm. when you pet her. Mm -hmm. So she gets a lot of excitement. She gets more excitement than Storm. And so when the Malinois gets, so when Fury gets over excited like that and starts putting her mouth and stuff on you, uh, what do you do about it? What are you supposed to do about it? I'm supposed to say no, no, if it hurts or mm -hmm. if it feels good, you're still not supposed to let your dog bite you. That's right. So when you, um, when I first brought Riot home as a puppy, do you remember like some of the things that you used to get to do with him? Like what, what were some of the things that mommy would let you do with Riot as a young puppy? Um, you would let me pet him when he was calm and you um, would let me pick him up when he was big enough for me to pick him up. Mm -hmm. pick him up. He was like really small though. So some of the things that I would let you do with Riot was um, I would let you feed him by hand and I would let you I would let you teach him things when you were feeding him. So like I taught you how to make him sit and uh, that's right. Yeah. Uh-huh. And lay down and different things. Do you do you remember that now? Yeah, and then like that thing where you walk with them and you will treat them and they fall you. Yes, that's called heel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then so, you like hold the tree and then make them spin. Uh-huh. And then like make a trail of treats. Yeah. Yep. And do nose them. work and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Blending, much like training a mountain dog, take patience. But you look pretty even without makeup on. Yeah, it's because of this hair. It is definitely because of the hair. Contoured. Oh my no. god, I'm huge. Mm. So mm. Okay, so here is a tip I'm going to pass down to you. I learned this tip from Bailey Syrian. Shout out to Bailey Syrian. So because we're going it to be using good. It does smell so good, right? To keep the eyeshadow pigment from falling down under your eyes and then kind of staining your eyes and making it so you have to kind of redo your makeup under your eyes, which is so awful. Um, just pack down some translucent powder, right? Just be very generous and just kind of throw it on there, right? It doesn't matter. We're going to blend it later, so it doesn't matter what it looks like. Um, but that will help kind of absorb whatever that, you know, pigment is going to hit your face. Look how old I'm getting. I feel like Mother Gothel. So do you have any, like, tips for other kids that are your age? Um, that are gonna have a Malinois for the first time. Like, what would you what would you say to that kid to prepare them to have a Malinois in their house for the first time? So, if your mom is taking them out of the crate and they're really happy to meet you, sometimes you should sometimes um not show yourself sometimes and like be calm with them when you're ready to come out and see them. Great. And if they be too excited, you just tell them no, no. If they know that. You do have to you do have to to have authority over them home. Even though you're a kid and you don't have authority over a lot of other things, you do have authority over the dogs, huh? Absolutely. That's a great tip. You are so smart. You are smart. You are really smart. You are smart and beautiful. That's a pretty pretty awesome combination. Now we are going to do our eyes. Are you ready? So Eve picked out, you picked out the Kat Von D. Ooh, all these pretty pinks and purples. Mm -hmm, I, like I picked them. out something similar. <gasps> Mine is the Too Faced. Um, is that glitter? Yeah, there's glitter in mine. You can use some of the glitter in mine okay. to finish your lids. Okay. Which one do we use though? So the first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna do kind of like a hooded eye tutorial because I have a hooded eye. And so um, lots of times those really pretty like winged eyes and stuff don't really look very good on my eye shape because my eyes are just very big and hooded. 
And so I have to do things a little differently. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to do um, a nice look for a hooded eye. Good first brush sure. we're gonna use is an angled brush. So grab your angled brush first. Come in here and draw out a little wing. And I'm going to come in with an even lighter color and continue to drag the color and blend it in across the lid of my eye and into my crease from this side out. So if you are new, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell. But should we talk about furry now? Yeah, if you want to talk about furry, we can talk about furry. What are some things that make furry so special? Fairy so special is that she listens a lot and she's like a really good biter. She is a really good biter. Yeah, she always needs to bite villains. So the first time we got her, she was pretty fast, but when she just grew up to this big, she actually ran a lot faster. She ran faster faster than a hedgehog. Yeah, she can run faster than like any animal that's faster. Sometimes Sometimes when we throw the ball for Fury, she, she actually goes really fast and comes back shortly. Yeah, and she'll yeah. catch it sometimes. Sometimes if I throw the ball like as hard as I can, she, she's when, already back there and catches it. Oh, are you allowed to um to to let the dogs potty by yourself? No, because I always have to check. And if they're big dogs, I shouldn't be allowed to because having three leashes attached to three dogs and they separate, it actually would pull you down because they're actually a lot stronger than you think if you don't have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so Eve actually raises a really good point there, I think, which is that you have to ask for permission to interact with the dogs. Also, it's because if you didn't ask for permission, you should always ask in case. Because if you forget they don't, you didn't ask, you, sit, you should always remember. Getting permission to interact or do things with the dogs is like, there, there's, no, there's no forgetting, there's no oops, there's no uh-ohs in this house, especially dealing with the dogs. She's to a point where she understands the interaction with the dogs really does have to be a permission-based activity. So um, even when it comes down to asking Eve to put the dogs in the kennels, which I will do, or I ask Eve sometimes to let the dogs out of their kennels, which I will do, at eight years old, um, she's capable of doing that because my dogs have clear boundaries and expectations, and she has also established with the dogs that she is, um, you know, above them. There is a hierarchy a little bit here in, in the pack. And, um, you know, I think to deny that would just be to deny nature. So Eve definitely is above the dogs in the hierarchy. The dogs know and understand that. And so she is capable of doing things like letting the dogs out of the kennels or, letting, or putting the dogs into the kennels when I ask her to. So I would always have to ask for permission. What do you do when they're out in the house and they're like running around or they're being too rowdy in the house? What do you What do you do? I would tell them no, no, and let them lay down and have a break for a bit so they can get calm, calm. That's right. That's so right. and I would also put them in the crate because they have to lay down for a bit. That's right. All right, guys. So there it is. There is the hooded. Um, hooded lid makeup that I do. This is like my everyday look. Um, but I just want to show you guys this this product because this is actually something that I feel like a lot of people would really love and a lot of women would probably really appreciate getting this for Christmas if you're someone who likes to wear lashes like I do. This is a product called Lashify and I literally quit getting eyelash extensions because of this. Not only is it less expensive, but it's also, um, it doesn't damage my, like, my real lashes. So I can take these on and off really easily and it doesn't damage or rip out any of my natural eyelashes. Um, and you know, this isn't super cheap to get the control kit up front, so it would make a really good Christmas gift and I will link this down below. And um, I'll kind of show you guys how I put these on because it's actually really easy. It seems a little intimidating at first, but it's not. So um, I think that what most people would probably be interested to hear from you, Evelyn, would be, um, what do you think about like when you're working with the dogs doing bite work and that kind of thing? Like if you're if you're working with Riot and you're gonna send him on a bite, like how does that make you feel? 
well, it actually makes me feel scared or brave sometimes. So, like, every time I do it, I feel a little nervous. But you should always just keep going with the thing you're doing. Because if you let go of the leash too early and the guy isn't ready, you would get the thing he did not want from the dog. Right. So, if I let him go really early because he was really strong, I would accidentally let go. And it's not good for the trainers. So when you're working with Riot, and we do like the training scenarios where like we pretend that there's a bad guy who's gonna like maybe take you away or something, like, and you have Riot, does he make you feel safe? Do you feel safe when you're with Riot? Yes, because he and me would always train Riot with mom. So, if we were training him and a bad guy came up to us and would try to take me and mom didn't see, Riot would protect me because he would always be watching the kids because seeing kids, so if I was getting kidnapped, Riot would always come because if dogs are actually trained, they know that they're supposed to be smart and supposed to fight the bad guy That's right. and try to defeat them. That's right. Okay, so here are the little lashes here. They come in these little tiny pieces and you, you literally just map them onto the underneath part of your eye. That's what makes these unique, is we're not putting them on top, we're putting them underneath and it makes it so that you cannot even tell that you're wearing them because when you close your eyes, you can't see any lash line or anything. It's completely hidden in camouflage and it just looks like your natural lashes. So you basically come in here and you stick them on underneath. Um, typically, you're gonna go from the outside in, but because the shape of my eye is kind of weird and they're not uniform on both sides, I found, I actually, for me, it just works better to go from the inside out, but, but that's not what you should do, especially if you're doing it for the first time. Go from the outside in but you just come in and place the lash right there and then you keep going all the way across. All right, so there it is. This uh, eye does not have lashes on. This eye has the Lashify lashes on and as you can see, um, there's no lash line that you can see like you can see when you wear a falsy. So um, I really like these a lot and I think that they would make a amazing Christmas gift for your partner. All right, guys. What do you think? This is the finished look. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs>